Hi there again everybody, Boy back with you and welcome to another action-packed edition of Trekworks. Well, we're back on the bench today working on the Revell 1500 scale Into Darkness Enterprise model. And since our last update, what I've done now is i finished working on all the seams. I've got that all taken care of. I've got the nacelles mounted on there permanently now and the seams are all done up on those. And we've uh, sprayed down a nice uh, coat of gloss clear on the model now so that we can begin applying our Aztec masks. And you guys are probably aware I'm using these Aztecs from Brett over at Orbital Dry Dock. And what I'm doing today is I'm working my way around the saucer applying those. Starting on the top and then I'll go to the bottom next. You can, might notice that I removed that little rib piece there on the top. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out I wanted to give you guys is the, uh, I mentioned earlier that I used the Tamiya Clear when I did those little vents on the side. Well, when I sprayed my clear coat on that, it caused that Tamiya Clear to run like ink. <laughs> so I had to take that back off. I've got it sanded down here. And I'm going to be finishing doing all this work, and then I'll repaint this and put this back on at the very end. Just a little uh, heads up on something like that. I had never tried to spray over top of the Tamiya Clear before with another clear coat, and uh, it didn't like it very well. But we didn't have a major catastrophe. Uh, pretty easy to fix it. So what we're doing now is we're getting ready to apply some more of these masks, and I'm going to show you how I do that here in just a second. I wanted to mention that uh, Brett at Orbital Dry Dock, he's got several sets of these masks available. Uh, some of you might be aware that he has this kit. He has another kit for the Enterprise refit. Uh, he's got this beautiful set here for the classic TOS Enterprise uh, in 350 scale, which you can see on the photo here. It allows you to paint on all the markings. So these, these are not just Aztec masks. These are uh, stencils for... Uh, basically, you don't have to use any of the decals at all from the model kit once you use this kit here. This is really, really nice. So You guys can find uh, Brett on YouTube, too, over at... Uh, orbital underscore dry dock and he's got some instructional videos out there on how to uh, apply these masks and they're very informative if you guys are um, interested in using a set of these you can uh, check his videos out he's got a couple videos one showing just the basic working with the masks and another one actually applying them on the lower saucer of the refit and doing a complete uh, paint job in a time-lapse type of a setup so it's really really cool and very informative so what we're going to do now guys I'm going to take the camera here and zoom in you can see I've got one of the pie wedges uh, set up and I'm going to uh, show you how I do this now you, uh, what's included with Brett's kit is you've got uh, your basic masks here which you can see I've started to cut them out these are the individual pie wedges for the uh, top of the saucer and I'm cutting out these pie wedges and then the second part here is you have this transfer tape which is this is the heart of the kit basically which allows you to uh, once you pull off your individual masks on your sheet that you want to use, you cut out a piece of this transfer tape, which I've already done here, and you lay it on top and you use this little squeegee here to squeegee it down. Whoops. And you're going to then uh, lift the uh, transfer tape and pull the masks with it off of the back uh, backing sheet, and then transfer the whole roll of masks over to the model, which makes it really, really nice and uh, makes it go a lot faster than the old method. Uh, uh, that's been around for quite a while so I'm gonna put this other set of masks away real quick guys and then we're gonna start off on this okay first thing I'm gonna do is use my hobby knife here uh, what you're gonna do is you have a basic negative and positive pattern on these uh, Aztec designs on these starships so my last row that I laid down I left the big block here uh, in place and so our next row over we want to alternate that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the big block or pattern if you want to call it that. We've got an excess little bit of film around here on the outside. We just get rid of that. I'm going to slide my transfer tape over here. And then I'm just going to start removing these uh, uh, masks with my hobby knife here. And you can just easily grab a hold of them and they'll they'll come right off for you. And you just kind of follow them around. These are nicely cut and they come off nice and clean. And then you're just going to skip a row as you go up, so you leave a space between each uh, pattern there. Uh, but you have a definite uh, pattern that evolves, and it'll wind up looking just the opposite of the one that you had before it. So it's a positive-negative effect. It kind of flip-flops as it goes back and forth. And you'll get the hang of that once you start working with it. And so we're just going to pull these off of here. They come off, like I said, nice and cleanly. And I'm got my little bucket down here. I'm throwing these away. Now, uh, as Brett mentions in his um, 
instructional video, you can set up a piece of wax paper off to the side here and save these scraps if you wanted to. Um, but uh, I haven't been doing that. Everything's been going nice and smoothly for me. I'm putting these down with no problem at all. And uh, it's going really fast. I've only been working on this upper saucer for maybe about 25 minutes or so, so probably an hour or so I'll have the whole top of it done here. Hopefully I'm being in camera here for you and you can see what I'm doing. I'm just pulling these off and they come off nice and clean. This is some really, really nice material that these are made out of. And as I've talked about before, there are different types of materials for masking out there. And uh, 3M's website will tell you the difference between these. This material here is specifically designed for masking and airbrushing. Okay, guys, so Brett's using a really good quality product here. Okay, now we've got our, uh, our basic pattern in place. And what we're going to do now is we're going to come back and we're going to... Uh, Actually, I'm going to take these two little strips off the bottom here because they're not in place on the other rows that I've done. Okay, and we're going to put down our um, transfer tape over top of this, making sure we cover everything. Then we've got a little squeegee here. We just take and make a couple of passes over, keeping that edge nice and flat. Okay, and then we're going to pull this up. And we're going to flip this over now, and this is the tricky part. And it takes a little while to get used to this, but you'll get the hang of it. The trick to this is that you're going to roll from the back side. You're going to flip this over so your transfer tape's on the bottom. And you're going to roll this backing paper back off of that. That's, that's uh, what Brett, re Brett recommends for doing it, and it's a way that I found that it works the best as well. You can use this little tool here to help hold the rest of the film down. But the trick is, is that you want to get your... Uh, you want to roll this paper keeping constant pressure on it when you're rolling it. So I'm going to turn it around this way so you guys can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to use my fingers to uh, to make sure I keep downward pressure on this as I'm pulling it back. And I've already got the front one there that's trying to stick a little bit. And when that happens, you just roll it back and uh, try it a couple times and it'll eventually release. I'm going to hold it close here. And like I said, the trick is to keep both fingers on this and keep that downward pressure on it. So as you're pulling backwards, you're applying pressure and laying these down onto the uh, transfer tape. And the farther you get towards the bottom, the easier it starts to go because you're, you're able to uh, get a better grip on this piece of paper as it gets wider. You can see it's rolling off there pretty nice. If you do have one lift on you a little bit, you just roll backward a little bit and, you know, stick it back down and then see that one lifted a little bit and you just kind of little tap there and it'll put it back down. The trick, like I said, is to keep constant pressure as you're rolling here and that'll prevent those from grabbing that edge and lifting up as you're going along. Just about to the bottom now. Okay, and we're clear. So we're ready to apply this on the model now. Now I'm going to do is uh, bring the camera back up here for you. And we'll go to this spot right here, and we'll actually apply this one. So you're basically laying it on here, and you're looking to uh, line this up on the grids, the grid pattern that's on the model, uh, starting out on the bottom side. You don't want to. I've touched this on the model too much, guys, because it will start to grab and it might lift a couple of the masks off of that paper, the transfer tape. So you want to make sure you're pretty close before you tack any of this down. Okay, and I'm really happy with that spot right there. Now we come back with our squeegee again, and we just lightly rub this down. You don't have to press super hard. You're just looking for a... Uh, you can see it change color when you're... When you're uh, Laying it down on the model properly, you get rid of those little air bubbles and things like that, and it, it just smooths right out. And you're not actually scratching the paint here. You're on top of this uh, 
transfer tape. So just a couple passes like that. I like to leave a little bit overhanging like this so I can easily grab a hold of it. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply even pressure and I'm just going to roll this back off. Go slow in case you snag one of them. If one of them lifts, just do the same thing. Just roll backward and put it back down and, and then keep going the other way. That tends to happen on some of the smaller ones. You notice that one there tried to lift on me a little bit. So we're going to rub that a little bit. If it keeps doing that, you can always attack it from the other side, guys, or off to the side or something here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from the top side, and then we have, we uh, we got that one to stick that time. Now, if any of these happen to move on you just a little bit or something happens, you can easily uh, take your hobby knife or something similar, and you can come back and you can lift these right up very easily. And... Uh, uh, Recenter them or whatever you need to do. I've got one here that did move on me a little bit. So we're just going to lift it up. And I'm going to actually stick this on my on the very tip of my hobby knife here. And then I'm just going to center it and lay it back down on there. Okay, guys, and then you can maybe take your finger and go over it a little bit. Now, to apply the paint on this, um, you don't need to use a whole lot of pressure, uh, so you shouldn't have any worries with any of the mask lifting up. I'm going to spray these on at about 15 to 20 PSI using the, uh, I'll show you one of these again guys, I'm be using the uh, Poly Transpar uh, paints again, which are the uh, true iridescent colors, lacquer based. These are already pre-thinned and ready to go. One thing I want to mention on these paints, guys, is if uh, you get these shipped to you, they could have been sitting for a little while. And what these tend to do is the pigments tend to settle uh, into the bottom of these bottles. So you want to make sure you look at that. And if you see them down there, you've really got to shake these up really, really good and really thorough. And if shaking doesn't work, you're going to actually have to take the lid off here and stick some type of a stirring device down in there and break that stuff loose. And then shake it some more because that's very important to make sure you get the proper amount of pigment mixed in with the, uh, the rest of the paint here. Otherwise, it's not going to look right. So just kind of keep that one in mind. So, okay, guys. Well, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to continue working my way around the saucer and get the rest of these applied, and then we're going to come back and show you actually painting on some of them. So we'll see you back with that in just a second, guys. Hang in there. Okay, so here we are again with you everybody, and you can see I've completed uh, installing the Aztec masks on top of the saucer. It took me about another 30 or 40 minutes to get that done. And you can see I've got one wedge that I've got taped off here uh, that I already painted earlier when I was doing some test painting. So I've got the perimeter taped off here. I've got the uh, BC deck uh, dome taped off, and I'm going to use one of these little towels here and tape off or uh, cover up my... Uh, engine the cells here so I don't get any overspray on those and we're gonna turn our airbrush down now I've decided I'm gonna do most of this color uh, most of the primary color on this is gonna be the uh, shimmering blue effect so I'm gonna change colors on some of the panels and what I'm gonna be doing is using this little uh, edge that I've made up here and I'll just kind of come in and block some of this off actually I'm gonna cut this to a little bit of a curve so I can follow some of the uh, uh, panels there and um, so we're going to kind of have uh, an overlap on some of these colors, which I think is going to look pretty cool. A little bit different than the refit, where everything is like really clean and got nice clean edges on it. So, okay, I've dialed my airbrush in now. I've got it loaded with some paint. I'm going to back off on the pressure just a little bit. And get a little test shot here, make sure everything's flowing good. We've got some nice blue coming out of there. So I'm going to start here in the back and just uh, work my way up here. I'm not worried about this edge over on the other side because that's got that little spine area that covers that. Okay. And as I said, some of these panels are going to be completely blue. Some of them are going to be... Uh, I think I'll go one more row up here. And some of them are going to be blue only, or uh, blue and then change over to gold. So I think 
that'll look pretty nice. Skip one here. Actually, I've got to cut another curve so I can get the top sections as well. So we're going to kind of continue on here and start doing a couple of these other ones. Oh yeah, we're getting a really nice blue effect on that. Okay, I'm going to block off this one here and I'm going to continue on. It doesn't take much of this stuff at all, guys. Like you can see, I'm barely spraying this on. And it's working really, really good here. Okay, it's looking really nice. You probably can't see it from that angle over there, but uh, it's turning out really good here. coverage on that. You can see this is going by pretty fast here. I'm going to go ahead and make this entire roll blue here. The next one. I just want a few panel changes here and there from the gold and Like I mentioned, this paint is so thin and everything that it can be hard to see, so you want to kind of make sure you go at an angle every once in a while and check it out and make sure you're getting good coverage on it. I'll block this panel here. What I'm using as a guide to spray here is my mask, so it's kind of hard to tell if you're getting much paint on the... Uh, surface itself here so what I'm doing is I'm looking at the masks themselves to see the paint coverage on it. It shows up better on those than it does the actual surface here. So okay, let's do this first one here. I'm just going at random here having some fun with it. There's nothing really canon about this. liking it so far. Lock that one up there. Go ahead and just do this whole roll here. Again, I'm doing most of the saucer and blue here on the top, so.
All right, guys, well, you can see that it's darkened it just a little bit. It does, this paint does add a little bit of a uh, tint to the color, but it, it's pretty cool because it gives a look of the panels when the color is off, but when you tilt it a certain way, like you've seen before, that color is just going to jump. What I'm going to do right now, guys, is I'm going to switch colors and change over to my gold. We're going to do a few panels with that, and then we're going to do a little highlights on it with some red and some green. And that's going to bring it, and then we'll pull all the masks. So be right back with that in a second, guys. Okay, guys, well, I've been continuing on and uh, laying down a couple colors. I did my uh, some, some of my gold and some of my green, and now I've switched over to the uh, pearlescent red. And I'm going to be using just a little bit of this stuff here and there. So let me go ahead and touch some of this on here. I'm just going to be doing a few really small spots with it here and there. Okay, and that's about it. I don't want to do too much of that. Okay, guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go pull the masks off of this, and I'll come back and show you how she looks when we're all done here. So I'll be right back with that, guys. Well, welcome back, everybody, and you can see I've made quite a bit of progress on the model now. It's been about two hours or so, and I pulled all the masks off, and I started putting down uh, some of the markings on the model. Now I wanted to see how it was going to start looking, and I mentioned earlier that it was kind of plain looking when it was all white and everything, but it really, really looks nice. Now it's starting to come together and look really nice. Uh, I'll kind of pan over the saucer here for you, and you can see that we've got all those nice Aztec colors on there, those pearlescents that fade out and disappear when the light hits them a certain way and change colors. and I'm really, really happy with all that turned out. It's it's beautiful. And uh, you can see all those different shades on it all over the place. And we've got some blue, some gold, some green, some red. And it's really pretty. The paint worked wonderfully, and so did the masks. Had no problem pulling the masks off at all. And uh, so things are looking really nice on the model now. And um, I'll be uh, coming back a little bit later in the week with some more updates on the model of our progress. We've got a lot more work to do, of course. We've got to do all the aztec on the nacelles, the pylons, uh, the secondary hull, and, uh, of course, the bottom of the saucer. So I'll be back with that a little bit more, uh, a little bit more progress uh, later in the week for you guys on that. And um, once that's all done, uh, things are going to be coming to a close on this one. We'll put the rest of the markings on it, and it'll be a wrap. So it's been a fun model kit to work on so far. You can see that I went back and redid the spine piece here and put that on. We had that bleeding paint issue, so I painted that all first and uh, clear coated it before I put the blue back on there, so we didn't make that mistake again, so that worked well this time. And then also later in the week, we'll be back with a uh, out-of-the-box review here of the uh, 350 scale Space Battleship Yamato, of course. And I know a lot of you are looking forward to that. A lot of you guys are just as excited as I am about this kit, and I can't wait to get started on it. So we'll be back with that also later this week. So that's going to be a wrap for this one, guys. I appreciate uh, all the support and the kind words on the builds and uh, appreciate the viewers on the channel again, like always, guys. So keep building your models out there and have fun, and we'll catch up with you in a few days. And until then, happy modeling, everyone.